What if there was a different way to live and work? Beyond the hustle and hype, beyond the never-ending race to get more, more clients, more money, more audience, a way that's nourishing, grounded, creative, connected, and still makes a major impact in the world. You're listening to Wellpreneur with me, your host, Amanda Cook. Join me as we explore alchemy and action for entrepreneurs who want to do well and be well. Before we get into this week's episode, I want to tell you about an exclusive service Greenleaf Book Group has created for wellness entrepreneurs. If your business is looking to generate leads, gain wider visibility, stand out from the competition, and connect with more new customers, and really, whose business isn't, then you'll definitely want to check out Greenleaf Book Group's exclusive mini book service built just for wellness entrepreneurs to help you do that. If you want to learn more about creating a mini book with Greenleaf Book Group, you can reach out to them at contact at greenleafbookgroup.com. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Wellpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Cook, and this week we're continuing on our theme of season seven about creating more freedom and alignment in your business. This week, we're talking about one of my favorite Wellpreneur essentials, eliminate automate, outsource. This episode is super practical and no matter what stage you are in your business or if you just apply it to your life, you're going to find actionable tips so that you can free up more of your time and your brain space this week to create more freedom in your life and business right away. You're going to love it. I also want to remind you that I created a productivity blocks quiz that you can take at wellpreneur.com slash quiz. What I found is that most wellpreneurs who aren't getting the work done that they want to in their business, they have one of four productivity blocks. So you take the quiz, I'll identify your block, and then there's a video just for that specific block that's going to tell you the rituals and remedies and action steps that you can take to clear that block so you can start being more productive. It's really awesome, and I'd love for you to to try it. It's at wellpreneur.com slash quiz. Now let's get into our episode talking about eliminate, automate, outsource, and create some more freedom in your life and business. I love this topic because it creates instant results. Maybe not instant, but very quick. You can free up more of your time very quickly just by looking at eliminate, automate, outsource. So let's dig into this. And I know for some people, um, it can feel like, oh, I don't know, automation or hiring people. It feels like I'm not at that stage in my business yet. Or we can feel like we still need to do it ourselves, or maybe that's going to be expensive. But when you look at it in this order, eliminate, automate, outsource, it is very possible for everybody to do this, no matter what phase of business or life that you're in. So the first thing to look at to free up more time and space, like mental space in your life and your business is eliminate. This is the easiest one. Maybe not the easiest in terms of like fortitude and the bravery to actually do it and to just say, I'm going to eliminate that and not do it anymore. But it's the easiest one. It doesn't have any cost. You literally just decide you're not going to do these things anymore. Now, we've talked in earlier episodes of this season that the way to growth, the way to grow your business isn't through doing more things. It's actually through doing less and going deeper, doubling down on the stuff that's already working. And this is where elimination can really help us. So if you've looked at your strengths and your definition of freedom, all that stuff we talked about in episode one of season seven, then you should have a pretty clear idea of what direction you want to go in in your business, what areas you want to focus on in terms of products and services, offerings, marketing, sales strategies. So we want to double down on what's working and eliminate everything else. So it can be really useful as an exercise to just do a brain dump of all the different areas of your business. What are all the things you're doing? And then look at, are there any you could just eliminate? It might be a radical decision. Like instead of being on five different social media platforms, what if you just did one and really doubled down on it, really went big on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or whatever it is for your people? What if you just did one? Imagine that. What if instead of offering 10 products, you just had one? 
or maybe two, like an entry level product and then a higher. Well, usually you'd have a set of three, right? If you're going to have a suite of products, entry level and then your core product and then a premium product and get rid of everything else. Just eliminate it. The idea is we're going to do less and we're going to go deeper. Eliminating excess tasks in your business is hugely freeing. As a small business, we can't do everything, right? There's lots of things we could do. There's lots of things that's going to work, but it's not going to work if you do them all. So you have to choose and you have to eliminate some of the other stuff. This is, it feels so good. So I've seen with a lot of wellpreneurs that we feel like we should do a whole bunch of different stuff like, oh, I should blog or I should start a podcast or I should be on Facebook, even though I really hate it. So if you just make that list of everything you're doing in your business and then you can really get clear on, well, what am I trying to create and which which of these are making the biggest impact? There's this idea. Have you heard of the 80-20 rule that 20% of your activities actually give you 80% of the results? There are some great books on this on 80-20 thinking in business and in marketing and in your personal life. So what are the 20% of the things in your business that are actually getting you the results? What's actually growing your email list? What's actually engaging with your clients? What's actually bringing new customers into your business? What if you could just double down on that and let everything else go? This exercise to actually list out everything you're doing in your business is also really useful as we move into the other phases of automating and outsourcing to see what you might need to find a tool for or what you would need to hire for. But the first step is to do that map of everything that's happening in your business. I like to do this as a mind map. So I'll put each area in a circle with kind of like little spokes off of it. So I would have one circle for marketing and one circle for tech and one circle for like admin stuff, which would be like accounting and legal, things like that. And one circle for sales. And then off of that, just list all of the tasks that happen, all the different things that you work on in your business. And this can start to show you Once you have your map like that, you can start to see, well, what is the stuff that I need to do? Like, what's the stuff that I uniquely need to do? And where are the other areas that I could just eliminate it or automate it or outsource it? So the first step is looking at things to eliminate. Now, you can also apply this in your personal life, and this can work really well. I know when I first left my corporate job, one of the first things I did was cut most of my social obligations and just kind of my life obligations because actually I did this while I was still in my corporate job because I needed to free up time. I just said, I've got to get myself out of all these obligations that they're all right, but I don't really love them. So I just eliminated them. Now you can't always do that right away. Sometimes there's a transition period, but you can get clear on your priorities and the stuff that is adding value to your life and that's really important and the stuff that you can let go of, even if other people might judge you for it. (laughs) Imagine that. We can't control how other people are going to react about our decisions, but you can make the best decision for you and your life and your business and your vision of freedom. So in a very simple way, I'm continuing this this year because I've decided that I'm not sending Christmas cards. So sorry, everybody. In the U.S., we did send Christmas cards, but in the U.K., here in England, Christmas cards are huge. Like, it's really important to send people Christmas cards. And I did it last year. You know, I'd been doing it for years, actually, but I did it last year. And as I was doing it, I just realized, you know what? This is not fun at all. Like of all the things I do for Christmas, I'm not getting anything out of this activity of sitting down, finding everybody's addresses, writing all the Christmas cards, like, oh, it just addressing them all, trying to get my husband to sign them and then take them to the post office. It was not fun at all. So I'm not doing it this year, which will probably here in England raise some eyebrows. Um, My husband is going to send a card to his mother because she still needs to get a Christmas card, he thinks, and he's going to do it. He's going to take care of that. I'm not doing any Christmas cards. So that's like a very simple thing. Um, And instead, I'm asking myself questions like, well, what does Christmas mean to me? What are the things that I find the most festive that I really want to spend my time and energy on? And I'm going to do those instead. 
So that's a very simple example, but where can you eliminate things in your life? I mean, there's probably lots of areas, maybe lessening your standards a little bit in some areas. Now, this is totally personal, so you don't have to eliminate anything. But if you're looking to free up some time, you could look at, well, what areas am I holding myself to this ridiculous standard? And maybe I wouldn't have to do that thing. Maybe I can just let it go. Let it go. As a Wellpreneur podcast listener, you know how important it is to build a community of fans and ideal customers for your business. And how do we do that? By having a magnetic lead magnet, right? Something that establishes you as an authority and attracts those right people into your business. But how nice would it be to work with a team of experts to create a lead magnet that was ideally suited for your business and to also give you marketing guidance and support? Well, Greenleaf Book Group, our sponsor, has just released an exclusive mini book service just for wellness entrepreneurs to help you generate leads, gain wider visibility, and connect with more potential customers. They'll help you create a mini book that promotes your business and thought leadership to clients by establishing you as an expert. But along with the content, Greenleaf will also deliver one-on-one coaching and how best to use the mini book to build your online lead funnel and drive your digital marketing campaigns. If you'd like to learn more about their mini book service and book a free consultation, you can reach out to them at contact at greenleafbookgroup.com, or you can call them on the U.S. number 1-512-891-6100. Okay, once you've eliminated what you can from your life and your business, that will immediately free up some time. And then we want to move on to the second step, which is automation. Now, I always do the elimination first because what's the point of hiring people or trying to find tools to automate if you can just get rid of that task altogether, right? But once we've got that list of tasks that we actually know we want to do, then we want to look at tools for automation. And I always like to look at automation before outsourcing. So... With automation, you're finding a tool that can do a repetitive task over and over again. So one thing that comes to mind that I would say 99% of people listening will want to get signed on for is an online schedule. Automating your schedule is incredible and a huge time saver. So what I mean by this is having an online booking system. So when a client or a contact wants to book in with you, they can just go to a certain web page and will see your online schedule there and can book the appointment. This is a game changer if you do not have online booking yet. It syncs with your online calendar. So mine syncs with my Google calendar. So it knows my availability. I can customize my availability. I can customize the types of appointments that I have. It automatically sends people reminders. It lets people reschedule their appointments themselves so they don't have to talk to me about it. It is a massive time saver. I've tried a few different online schedules and the one that I love and I use and I recommend is called Acuity Scheduling. So if you'd like to check out Acuity and you want to help out Wellpreneur, I have an affiliate link. It doesn't change the price to you, but it gives me a little commission if you sign up, which pays for my Acuity, which is lovely. So if you want to check that out, it's wellpreneur.com slash Acuity. So Acuity Scheduling, that's amazing. If you don't have an online schedule, that is a great place to start with automating your business. Now, there are tons of other tools you can look at for automating your business. So something I did is I upgraded several years ago to really good website hosting, really good WordPress hosting, and they will make sure that your backups, for example, are all done automatically. That's an automatic time saver. So there's also services that will do website maintenance for you and install, update all your plugins, things like that. Then there are, of course, social media automation tools. So they can help to automate the publishing of your social media posts so you don't need to think about those and be doing them every single day. You can just set them up once a week or every two weeks or even have an assistant do it. There's another kind of automation tool that works with 
a wide variety of programs. It's almost like glue that holds these different programs together. It's called Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R. And that's a bit more complicated than we want to talk about in this episode. But the idea with something like Zapier is that it connects almost any tool to any tool. So for example, if you wanted to keep a spreadsheet of all your new clients, you could hook Zapier to your payment system. So you could say, when somebody pays me in PayPal or Stripe, put their name and their email address in the spreadsheet. Or when somebody buys my product on Teachable, then add them to my email marketing system, like add them to ConvertKit and then send them this type of email. It glues all sorts of things to all sorts of things. So I even had at one point a receipt system set up. So I said, when I put a screenshot or forward an email to this folder, then like record an expense in Google Drive. I don't know. I had the whole thing set up. So Zapier, if you feel like getting a bit creative, um, you can really connect anything to anything. But what I'd recommend to start with is definitely start with an online schedule and then take a look at that list of all the activities going on in your business and ask yourself, what is it that you personally don't need to be doing? Like, do you really need to post on social media or could you just, you know, create the content or approve the content and then have somebody else post it? Automation is a big topic and you can totally geek out on it. And if it's something you'd like to talk about more, then come into our Wellpreneur community group. And this week we can share our favorite tools and our favorite ways to automate our businesses. Okay, part three, once you've written your list of tasks, you've eliminated what you can, and then you've automated what you can possibly automate, now it's time to look at outsourcing. Outsourcing means bringing in somebody else, bringing in an expert so that they can take tasks off your plate. And of course, this could look like hiring somebody, but for many wellpreneurs, you're not going to want to hire somebody full time. You can find contractors to help you out in your life and also in your business. But the first step to being able to outsource successfully is being really clear on what tasks you need done. So that's why you need to do that, you know, that document where you write out what is, you know, what are those tasks and in the different areas of your business so that you're really clear on what that job spec will be for somebody. What do you actually need? Now, a really good area to outsource first off is bookkeeping, right? Bookkeeping and accounting. That's something that you could outsource in your business. Also, a lot of people will outsource tech and website stuff, which is really useful. If that stuff holds you up and you get stuck and you find yourself wasting time trying to make your website work or set up new pages, that's a great area to outsource. One of the areas that I outsourced right away was the main Wellpreneur email account. So all the emails that come in through our contact forms and through people reaching out to the business, that all goes into a tool called Help Scout, which is amazing. Help Scout, totally love it. It's like a, it's a shared inbox for you and a team member so that you can handle these incoming emails. And getting those emails out of my personal inbox freed up a lot of time and just made life a lot easier. And it's also a lot more scalable because it's not just me who knows about all these issues. There's somebody else that can help provide customer support. Like if I'm traveling or I'm working with clients or I'm creating podcasts, right? This is all about freeing me up. So looking to outsource your main email account is really amazing. Now, I have a couple recommendations for how you can find people to help you. One thing that I love to do that I've seen work for a lot of people is actually just ask in your networks and in your Facebook groups if people have recommendations for service providers that they've worked with before. That works really well. But there's also a site called Upwork that I used for years to find different contractors to help me out in my business. So that's available on just upwork.com. But they've changed their pricing structure recently. And so I'm not liking Upwork as much as I did before. So one of the sites that I'm really liking now and that I know the owner of is called jobrack.eu. Jobrack.eu, it's a site specifically to hire people in Eastern Europe. And it's really awesome. The owner's a great guy. And I know people that have got really excellent um, contractors and even employees through that. So um, that is definitely one to check out if you're looking for somebody to do a little more time for you, like more 10 to 20 hours a week. 
Now, on the personal side, there might be areas that you could outsource in your real life too. Like what about house cleaning? That's a really common one that people start with. It's just freeing you up a few hours a week. You might be surprised at how affordable it is. Another area that people look at is meal deliveries or grocery deliveries right? So how could you, that kind of falls onto this idea of automation too, but could you automate or outsource some of these chores that you do on a regular basis? Wow, this is a short episode, but totally jam-packed with ideas. So I really want you this week to sit down and do that task list, map out all the stuff that happens in your business, and then go down the list. Can you eliminate it? Can you automate it? Can you outsource it? Because there is no way you can grow as a business if you're doing everything. You're just going to be the bottleneck to your own growth. So let me tell you, eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. It feels so good. So eliminate the stuff and then look at what you can automate and outsource. Let's keep having this conversation in our Facebook community. It's called the Wellpreneur Community Group on Facebook. Um, And I'd love to chat with you there about your favorite ways to eliminate, automate, and outsource. And also, don't forget, if you feel a bit like you're just not being productive, you're not getting enough work done, then I invite you to take my Productivity Blocks quiz. You can take it at wellpreneur.com slash quiz. We'll find your biggest productivity block, and then I've created a video where I'll, for each block, I'll tell you the specific rituals and remedies and actions to help you clear that block so that you can be more productive. Okay, that's it for me this week. Have a fantastic week freeing up more time in your life and business. And I'll see you back here next week with our next episode. 